though I can't bring myself to step inside the house when I do get home. Anna still rests, I assume. I hear nothing to say otherwise. Not her voice or her laughter, which will easily fill any space with cheer. Everything is quiet, other than the hum of engines from the car being brought away. A bird's cry sounds off from the gardens, snapping me out of my reverie, and makes me look in that direction. It's an easy decision to go there. If Hana is resting, recovering from sickness, I don't want to disturb her with how agitated and annoyed I am underneath the surface, no matter how well hidden I can keep it. Not to mention I've been neglecting the garden for too long. Might as well stay put out here for the time being. Afternoon already. Hmm. Gray skies loom over in the horizon, though the sun fights for every precious minute it gets to stay. It'll rain again soon, with the wind bringing along the gloomy clouds normal to Luxburn. Until then, it doesn't hurt to be out here for fresh air and sunshine. I walk to the gardens, what little of it there is at the moment anyway, and I kneel by the daffodils. These were the first to be brought here and planted on my request. And if nothing else, they brought in a sense of peace. They were mother's favorite. Closing my eyes, I lift my chin up to welcome the light that shines upon me. And for a minute, I can imagine myself as one of the flowers, peaceful, blooming, and all too happy to stand in its warmth. Life would be so much easier if we were all like flowers, wouldn't it? <laughs> but I didn't step out here to get all philosophical. I have problems much more practical than figuring out the meaning of life, after all. Too many things have gone on these past few days. And I want to forget about them, even for just a moment. It's almost all saints, isn't it? To think I've almost forgotten. I speak the words absent-mindedly. The date means nothing to me, as neither worship, as I neither worship the religion nor have any graves to visit. After all, Mother was never given a proper burial. But it's a date, as good as any, for me to grieve. Otherwise, I would have done so every single day, crippling myself and shutting everything else out. And everyone. <laughs> I can remember how the flames licked at her flesh and how it consumed her body, until there was nothing left but ash. I stood there watching with the operator and a social service worker, though I could have been alone for all I cared. I felt alone. It was the most that could be done. No one would attend the funeral of a dead prostitute, let alone pay for it. All that is left of her, proof that she had lived, is her name written in the ledger of Luxbourne Cemetery. A lighter and me. Pulling out the lighter from my jacket, I can't stop myself from flicking it open to stare at the flame and to rub my thumb over her name. All in all, it isn't much, but it's something. And it'll be wrong of me not to make something of myself when she would have given everything to make sure I can become anything I want to be. Feels like I'm stuck in a nightmare right now. What I would give to have you here by my side, mother dear. To see you smiling at me. Alive and as beautiful as ever. I'm afraid I'm starting to forget what your face looks like. I've already forgotten the shade of your hair. Eleanor Chandler was a wonderful woman, though not everyone would have agreed. Not everyone had seen past her occupation, past her vices and her illness. All they saw was a poor woman who sold her body to make ends meet and had a bastard son because of it. They didn't see the mother who worked hard to put food on the table for me, the woman who gave and gave and gave to me while expecting nothing in return. She taught me the merits of hard work, but though I loved her so, I worked hard for myself. I would not be foolish, so selfless towards people who would never give back. I learned that from the father who plucked me out of an orphanage for his own selfish gain. I pocket the lighter before I can feel the urge to actually set anything ablaze. Considering my close proximity to the flowers, they would be the most likely victim of arson. Just the thought of itself is blasphemous. Nevertheless, that doesn't save them from being picked. Just enough to make a bouquet of the things in honor of Eleanor. Would you be proud of me if you saw me now, Mother? <laughs> Maybe. You are always so forgiving. No matter what trouble I got into, more than I deserved. Especially now. It's been a while since I've talked to my mother like this. I've been thinking of both my dear parents far too much as of late when I shouldn't. I have a future to look forward to and the present to take care of. These memories of the past give me nothing but grief. 
the life of Lucille Mitchell Chandler should be nothing but a footnote in Luke Wright's non-existent autobiography. It's because of Hannah, isn't it? I worry that she is all too much like Mother, that it scares me. And the thought that I'm turning into my father is even more so. But even if history is so set to repeat itself, I'm not a child anymore. Content to sit aside, unable to do anything to help, and too inexperienced to think that the worst wouldn't happen. I have money to buy the best medicines and doctors if need be. She'll get better. She has to. And once we get over this little bump in the road, I can stop worrying. All will be right with the world. Unfortunately, my time alone is cut short, though. I... I think those flowers look beautiful, my lord. The parlor... The room where the lady stays for her tea. It could certainly use some. The voice is not familiar, though I'm not really one to remember such things. Going with her attire, I would say that she's one of the housekeepers. Strange, considering I've sent all the staff but Johans away. And her face, as pretty, as pretty as it is, is unfamiliar to me. It would be a lie if I said that it didn't set me on edge. Most would say that I cared little for my employees. That isn't entirely untrue. However, I'd like to think I know the people who work for me, especially those who would roam my home, even if it is just a face and a name. Besides, I would remember a beauty such as her. Who is this? Is she, if she is someone impersonating a household staff to get in, she's doing a bad job of it. Didn't you get the memo? Are you new? Today is a day off. You aren't supposed to be here. I expect poor excuses and apologies. The likes of her often give, but she merely smiles. Oh, oh, no. I've been a servant here since you first came. And I see no signs of lying nor hear it in her words, yet they can't be true but I find that I feel like I can relax. She has that sort of smile that makes one's kindness shine through without words or action. It reaches her eyes, filling them with a strange sort of mirth, as if she's just thought of something very funny. Perhaps, had it been any other person, I would have interpreted it as a deceitful grin. But the curl of her lips and the shine of her eyes are too soft to hold any malice. Well, I mean, she's obviously like the witch lady, and this music is the same music that played when we saw it. Charlotte in the attic. I think it's interesting It's interesting this is the first time we've seen her not all bloody. Yeah. But it's interesting. She takes my silence as a sign that she can continue. And it's not like I feel any urgency to stop her. I'm not really in the mood for company. But I'm not adverse to it at the moment either. Entertaining a beauty like her, even for a little while, wouldn't hurt. It helps that she proves easy to listen to, despite how oddly she speaks. I'm sorry, I apologize. I shouldn't have bothered you. Look at me, talking to the master of the house without even asking for permission. What will the others think? If you'll excuse me, I'll just... I haven't driven you away yet, have I? And it's your day off. I don't see why we can't chat a bit. Of course, if that is what you wish, as as long as it does not get you into trouble with with the lady. To even take time for someone as lowly as me, no wonder that everyone under the mansion's employ is so fond of you. <sighs> Though it should have no longer been a surprise to me. You have always been such a, a kind and loving lord. I have to stop myself from calling her out on her shite. It's almost as if she's talking about an entirely different man. Huh, you know, maybe this Edward person from the past that you look just like. No matter how big my ego gets, I know for a fact that I'm hardly in the running for Best Boss of the Year award. The only reason that most of my staff stay is because of the decent compensation. I'm not cheap. But if she wants to lay it on thick, I'll allow it. Who wouldn't want a beautiful woman complimenting them? I'm sure she'll be fine with this. We are just talking after all. Unless you had other things on your mind when you approached me. The words leave my mouth before I even realize what I've said. I panic a bit. Though I can get away with picking up women out in the city, 
sometimes even out of the county. I've always taken care not to do so in my home or in my businesses. Not when it'll be so easy for Hana to find out about my infidelity through these channels. Though seriously, I still don't see what the big deal about it is. I just have an itch I need to scratch. I... I know it must be amusing to see a girl flustered for... for a man of your... stature. But please don't say such things, my lord. I saw you alone and simply thought you could use some company. Thankfully, I do count my lucky stars. It seems the woman takes it as a joke rather than the casual pass it was intended to be. So how are you liking your work around the mansion? The place is wonderful, but I imagine the upkeep is ungodly with all the rooms and whatnot. I don't even want to think about how many people are on the staff roster. Work is work, my lord. It is a way of living. A purpose from day to day. It is certainly far better than doing nothing or having no food to eat. The house itself is also beautiful. There's no lack of things to look at. I'm sure you've seen those books in the study. I... I can't read any of them yet, but... If given the chance, I... I'm sorry. I shouldn't be thinking of those things. Especially when the rains... They might bring more work to us soon. It will definitely be much more... More difficult when it returns. Idling about is the least I should be doing. I guess you can put it that way if you want to be brutally honest about the whole thing. And the rain shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> if a little dreary, at least she doesn't beat around the bush. I like the honesty. Many would bemoan their status as a household staff, as a janitor or other menial role, and believe themselves to be for greater things. And I would not begrudge the idea that one can always get better. But one shouldn't be so discontent with what they have either. The rain is something I simply must get accustomed to if I am to live here. I've not spent long in this place after all. You know she doesn't have an accent. She, like, it's American. But I have been told that it has rained in this nation since a mother's time and their mother's time. Well, there's a hint of something. I don't... I don't know if it's, if it's somebody that has another accent trying to do, uh... An American accent, but there's a hint of something in there. There is little we can do about it. I am just glad to have time in the sun, even for a short while. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> really, these sunny days have been welcome, though I can't imagine they'll last for long. <sighs> Sometimes I just want to pack my things and leave for somewhere like, say, the Bahamas or whatnot. Get some sun and surf. But certainly, you will return for us, won't you? This is your home, after all. Your people, they won't be pleased if the master of the house leaves. Of course, I can't very well leave my businesses hanging here, can I? <laughs> I just wish I could actually trust people enough to go on vacation without taking work with me. I've also got to get back here if I ever want proper meals. A proper pudding is something you'll never find out there. The woman nods at understanding, and I must say that she makes for a fine listening ear. But what she says next gives me pause, whether she meant for me to hear it or not. And good tea. Uh, fr from what the cook has been telling me, I've yet learned how to prepare one. Perhaps once I do, it would endear the lady of the house to me. I never expected her to be so unkind after what she did for me. Though it's only if one catches her in a foul mood. I wish I knew how to avoid her anger. I highly doubt she means Hana. That woman rarely has a mean bone in her body. And when she actually is nasty towards someone else, it's usually deserving enough, much like with that Rochelle woman. Hell, she even tolerates Harvey for me, even if she did admit that she doesn't quite like the man. She must mean the head housemaid, right? I have to laugh at that. Not that I have room to speak, I don't deal with her myself anymore, though, even... Johans has a few choice words about the head hag. She's just been under the right employ when she was also head housemaid for my father. And if anyone's not going to get along with someone, it'd be that crotchety old woman. I don't even remember her name. But the woman had been strict. Upstart bitch who took one look at me, her master's bastard son, and turned her nose up as if she were better by mere consequence of birth. That and she absolutely loathed my very existence. Perhaps the rumors had been true. 
She had a miscarriage while bearing another one of dearest father's children, and she saw me as an obstacle to her being granted a better standing in life. I remember that much, at least. The only reason I haven't sacked her yet is because of her competence. Also because working under my household makes her absolutely miserable. Her resignation made impossible by her pride. Nobody really gets along with that woman. I think everyone just tolerates her because of how old she is. I mean, not to be rude or awful or anything, but she's at the age where she'll be pushing Daisy soon enough. Is she? Really, my lord? I'm sure the lady is much younger than that. <laughs> I think the thought of tormenting the young and beautiful gives her reason to live. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem that way. Though I feel sorry for her. One's life should not be wasted away on hatred and anger. It is never good for the heart or the head to always carry ill thoughts. But at the least, you are here for us. We are certainly so lucky to have a lord like you. The lady even more so. The gods smile down on her. Though, if I may be honest, she is... She is to be envied. Even when I have my suspicions about her, she's just so easy to talk with that I've forgotten. I don't know who she is and if she's actually one of the household staff. That would explain why she would so easily give obviously wrong statements about my character. Though if she is here for malicious reasons, she would have done more than do small talk with me by now, wouldn't she? I have so many questions. Perhaps curiosity will kill this cat. It's strange that I've never seen you before. What's your name? Takako? You do not remember? I don't believe you've mentioned it, or am I missing something? You still cannot comprehend it, can you, my lord? Her answer chips away at the good mood I'm starting to get into. I have every right to be angry at the cryptic response. She threatens insubordination with her very presence alone. But instead of hurling vitriol at the woman, I take a deep breath. I do not want my mood ruined further than it already is. Not right now when I can let my temper take its course another time. Whatever your name is, and no matter how long you've been working for us, that does not change the fact that you shouldn't be here. I'll call you a cab to bring you to the city if you want. Shouldn't I? What if I do not wish to leave? I merely desire to stay by your side and serve. Is that such a deplorable thing? Her gaze sends chills down my spine. It's too easy to see the devotion, the obsession in her eyes. Not the good sort either, as her scrutiny makes me feel like I'm laid bare. The offness of her presence is all the more palpable with the feeling of bugs crawling on my skin and the silence that makes it seem as if the world has stopped. Any friendly atmosphere... A atmosphere? <laughs> atmosphere. <laughs> we might have had going for us is completely forgotten. Danger. A small part in the back of my mind screams. The part that has kept me alive all these years. And in hindsight, it'd be stupid not to take heed of it. But I've grown arrogant, complacent, and content to hide behind wealth and power. Yes, it's a, a deplorable thing, as you said, because I'd like to be alone now. Thank you very much. If you didn't want the day off, you should have reported to your superior. This is utterly unprofessional of you, and I shall be issuing complaints. In fact, if you know it's good for you, you should start looking for another employer. It's at my threat that the smile on her face turns tight. I see. It escapes you still. This is... unfortunate. How despairing that this misery must go on. But maybe, if you come with me, I can help you. I can... When she reaches out for me, I recoil with a hiss. How dare you lay your filthy hands on me without my permission! I am not going anywhere with you! Now step back and walk away before I have you forcibly removed! As if a switch had been flipped, the woman's expression turns horrific, although that may very well be the understatement of the century. She herself turns horrific. Her presence is suffocating, bearing down on me. I'm rooted to the spot through no fault of my own as my fear paralyzes. You are too much like that vile woman, poisoned by her rotten influence and her filthy words. But that can be remedied now that you're here. Oh, how we have waited to welcome you home. Come, 
My lord, the house beckons. When her fingers grasp the back of my coat, I finally find it in me to break off into a run. I can still feel her eyes on me as I run back to the house, but I refuse to acknowledge it, let alone look back. All I need to do is get away from her and to make sure she stays away. If that means acting like a coward and seeking out company to keep me safe, nobody can tell me to do otherwise. Bravery isn't something to be lauded if it comes along with stupidity. It must have been a sight to see the usually composed and reserved Luke Wright bursting through the doors. Not that I have much of an audience, unless there are other staff members who's chosen to disregard my orders for them to leave. Really, I still doubt that woman is one of the staff. Mustering up the courage, I look back through the windows to see if she followed me. She's gone. But I don't take any chances, putting as much distance as I can between us. <gasps> Stopping to catch my breath, Johan's sudden appearance nearly makes me junk... Junk? Makes me jump out of my skin. Don't fucking do that! <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! If I had a gun, I would have shot you! If I had any love left for my mutter, I'd take offense. But what happened to you? It looked like you've seen a ghost. Oh, really? Really? Ooh. Oh, gosh. There's so many things about that conversation that just... What? I don't know how to formulate into words yet. Like, there's the thing about how she's saying, like... The lady, she's obviously talking about Charlotte, yeah. that whole conversation. And it was just like... And she was so nice, and she freed me. And then she turned out to be this horrible person. I don't even know what to think about that right now. Any, sorry. Oh, if only it were such a delusion. But I can still feel her sharp nails digging into my back. The feeling was too real for it to have been a ghost. There was his housekeeper. I think, I'm, I'm not sure. In the gardens, she was acting odd and I thought to remove myself from the scene. Strange. I made sure the rest of the staff had left and I turned oh, into Dracula. I turned into Vladimir Dracula. <laughs> will suck your blood. Made sure the rest of... That's Russian. <laughs> oh, what was, I, I started good and then it very quickly turned to Dracula. <laughs> I made sure the rest of the house had left as the house was empty. That's still Dracula. <laughs> as you requested, describe this woman. <laughs> it'll, it'll, be, it'll have to be Russian. I'll have to do his lines in Russian. I can't do the Craig Ferguson doctor voice apparently right now. She was. She had, she had pale skin, dark eyes, pale skin. long dark hair. She wouldn't give me her name. I half expect a name from him. The man knows the staff better than I do, after all. But instead of an answer, he grows quiet. I'm pretty sure that is not a good thing. I'm even more worried when the other man looks me over. I have to protest when he pulls back my collar. What in the bloody hell are you doing? Checking for marks. Needle marks, to be exact. We don't have anyone like that among the staff. You could have easily been kidnapped. The cold feeling settles itself over me at the thought. I've long established my power over the more unsavory characters in Luxburn. Or I thought I did. And the most harm I thought that could come to me would be slander, robbery, or incarceration. Kidnapping? An attempt on my own person? I've forgotten that I'm as human, as mortal, as any other man, despite my wealth and status. Fortunately, you look unharmed. But I advise that you be accompanied by trusted individuals at all times from now on. If not me, an assigned guard. I'll be informing them of this soon, as they return from their day in the city. Already I can feel the energy leave me at the realization of what could have been. <sighs> all right. Yes, I suppose we should do that. But I think I'd like to call it a day. I should be safe in bed, yes? I'll stand guard outside for the night. The madam has been inquiring about you, by the way. A guard. Any other threat and he alone would be enough to make me feel safe. But what I saw, whatever it is I saw, would one man be enough? That's all well and good. But there's something else. That housekeeper. She. Luke, you're home! I was worried about you. The grin that I can muster is probably lopsided. 
forced as I snapped my mouth shut to keep myself blabbing about witches and monsters. Because here I am standing in the hallway, dirt on my pant legs and sweat dotting my forehead. A far cry from my usual pristine condition. I don't want to worry, Hana. A cough. <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> you look like you wrestled in the mud and moss, dear. And those flowers. Were you gardening? Uh, what? Oh, these. I didn't realize I still had them. He even had the time to wrap a little ribbon around them. Hmm. <laughs> I really did not. But there they are, still in my grip, the daffodils I had taken from the garden. Even in the wake of my flight, I had refused to let go of them whether I was conscious of it or not. Shall I put them in a vase? Should I? Oh. Oh, I... I... See, my first thought is that the flowers are possessed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it would matter. I uh, give them to her. He was thinking about her. Hmm. I feel like it'd be so strange to be like, oh, no, just throw them away. What are you thinking? I am trying to think about all of the different things that these flowers mean or symbolize. His mother. Yes, they symbolize his mother. The lady ghost that we just had a very long and strange conversation with in the garden mm -hmm. suggested that we put them in... The parlor. The parlor for Hannah. So there's this thing of like, let's give them to Hannah, right? <laughs> but oh, maybe it's a she did ghost. It's a fucking, her. it's a fucking ghost telling us to do this. Drop them away. Here's ah, okay. So earlier, I had this weird feeling of there being like, go the ghost having like weird different personalities, and I'm wondering if we, because we saw, um. Johans? Charlotte, oh, Charlotte, like, that's <laughs> what I'm trying to think of. Charlotte, in the attic with Ash, who's a clearly different person. And I'm wondering if we're dealing with different things here. I'm not following you. Like different, um... Because inside the mirror has shown us something different... With everybody. Yes, but... It's like their personal. But, but um... What, who is it? Um, Marianne mm -hmm. had somebody actually walk out of the mirror. Yeah. And we we had... Or you or me... Like, I'd said something like, is she like... Is this like a mimicky type of thing? And you're like, mm, maybe. Or, um... Did... What happened with Ash? I need, to I need help remembering exactly. With Ash, the mirror? Yeah. He just saw the three friends. Right, and he broke it, and that was the end of it? Yeah. But he still heard the voices later throughout the house as he was going through it. He didn't actually see anything. Okay. I'm just trying to think of... Yeah, the only thing he's seen... He's seen the main dead girl when he's been with... Mm-hmm. Isabella. Has he seen her on his own, or has it always been with Isabella? Ash? Yeah. He pretty, I think he'd saw, well, he'd saw, Isabella wasn't at the party when he first saw her and didn't think oh, anything of Hana. her. Oh, by Hannah. Yeah, behind, um. Hannah Ro uh, Behind, uh, Rebecca. Rebecca. Yeah. I think that's the only time he'd seen her by himself. He did, no, he saw her in the woods, right? Did he, he just heard noises. Just heard? I thought he saw something, too. Maybe not. Yeah, he's been with, um. Isabella all the other times. Because then the only thing he's seen is Lady Charlotte upstairs. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time Luke has seen her. Right. And she's not appeared In the as, same a way. as a dead girl. Right. <laughs> she's appeared as a very attractive, I'm assuming, Asian person. I honestly feel like Luke is in the most danger out of everybody. Like, I know many people have died... Mm -hmm. But because she kept saying like, oh, what? you don't remember, basically, like you're not following. Mm -hmm. Well, there also is something where it seemed like they that um it that Luke is. 
I feel like he's the object, and she's just trying to get rid of everybody else surrounding him. That's to my... do something with him. Yeah, that's my interpretation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Because they think he's Edward from however long ago right. with Charlotte. I feel like that's appropriate. Yeah. I'm just wondering, like, what... Because she'd said something about the flowers to curry favor with Charlotte. Uh-huh. So I'm just wondering... I kind of want to throw them away because I forgot that she mentioned give the flowers and put them in the parlor. Right, she said give, put them in the power parlor because she might like it, and I want to learn and learn how to make tea to make Lady Charlotte like me. Uh huh. Which is why we should get rid of them and burn down the house. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that's burning the down the sub. house sounds like the thing <laughs> that you we should do. I wonder if we'll be given that choice, as because like we were very clearly showed. That Luke has a lighter and has arsenic, not arsenic, but arson-like <laughs> um, tendencies. Yeah. Has tenden- he, he tends towards arson. He has tendons. In- inclination. There we go. <laughs> he has inclinations to commit arson. So let's throw them away. That will, like, I'm 100% certain throwing it away will make the ghost angry. Yes. But you think that is better... Than, than uh, giving them to Hannah. Yeah, because I feel like, for some reason, I still feel like Hannah can die. And I like her, so let's not. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like, our cliffhanger is that she's... <laughs> yeah. The ghost has her hands around her throat. By the f- Yeah. So no matter what we do, I don't know if it'll change that anyway. Because mm-hmm. that's later. Because it's tomorrow. Well, I'm wondering if it could change what that means. Like, is it going to be like, I'm going to possess her? Or is it, I'm going to kill her? Oh, um. I don't, I don't know. So we should throw them away? Sure. That's kind of what I was initially leaning towards, but after walking through it, I felt more towards this. Huh? And you fl- <laughs> and your attitudes flipped the other way around. We can, uh... No. I want to think this through. Uh, well, can we look at the... To what day is today? This was the 30th. Today is the 30th? Yeah. And where did we leave off? What day did we end on? First. Okay, so it's not even tonight. Okay. Yeah, no, we've got quite a bit. Like two days. Zach is still not dead yet. Okay. Well. Which I imagine is going to get a lot of heat what, between us and the police chief. What do you think? Uh, keeping the flowers will do. I'm. I feel like keeping the flowers. The two options that I see. That was a really nice. She's really pretty. Mm-hmm. The the two options I see coming are that the ghost is less is not is less angry. The other option is the ghost possesses Hannah. That's what the options I see with the ghost. The other thing is just like I don't I feel like at this moment there'd just be a weird throwaway thing. Oh, but maybe the thing is these are the daffodils, right? Mm-hmm. We we throw them away. They're all going to notice that. And there's like something is wrong if we throw them away because daffodils re- remind Luke of his mother and they're like the most precious thing to him. But him throwing them away would just like I feel like give a clear signal that something's not right. Also, mm-hmm. that—that's my thought. That's what I—that's what I'm thinking. So you want to throw them away? Yeah, I think I've just talked myself into throwing them away. Okay. Maybe. Is that what you want to do? <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay. Uh, I didn't think this would, be, this would be such a big decision about <laughs> what we do with a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> Let's throw them away. Okay. Here we go. Looking at them brings only terrible thoughts. A horrible sense of ennui? Ennui? Fuck if I know. Okay. If one will. They're for mother. I want to confess. I want to cry out, break down for reasons that escape me. I've grown weak. But I choke because even Hana, sweet Hana, doesn't know the importance of these flowers. I could never bring myself to give that up. 
Everything I've laid bare to her. Everything but this. Hannah knows me as Lucille Mitchell, son of Damien Wright, oh. but not son of Eleanor Chandler. You were wrong! I she feel- won't know! <laughs> I've always feared that, even with her kindness, she would think lesser of me if she knew. I was just... pruning. No, I'd probably kill the thing rather than help it. Why don't you make yourself useful and throw these away? I shoved the flowers into Johan's arms without a second thought, hoping that they'd misinterpret my guilty look for one of discomfort and annoyance. The guilt is ridiculous, though. Flowers do nothing for the dead. <sighs> you could have told the gardener to do it tomorrow, Luke. I know you're meticulous about those flowers, but asking for help isn't going to kill you. I was bored. Anyway, what's done is done. We can clean up what I left behind in the morning. I expect a scolding of some sort, but none came as she only shakes her head with a sigh. For once, I'm allowed to sleep without further incident, though rest does not come easy. 